What people don't interest you or don't interest us? <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody interests us. Yeah. But we must put a, probably a caveat on that. Yeah. Everybody's true soul condition, personality and nature interests us. Yeah. And what we mean by that is the part of them that God created interests us immensely yeah. because every single person is actually a reflection in some way of God's nature and personality at their core. Yeah. But <laughs> very few people display it. Yeah. Very few people display it. In fact, most people are rather in addictions and other things. And so it's very hard to be interested in those parts of them that the, either their parents or they themselves has, have created. Yeah. So sadly, it's really common for people to have absorbed a bunch of injuries mm -hmm. in their childhood to then act in those injuries, to feel justified in those injuries, to feel there's nothing wrong with those injuries, to become yes. very entrenched in facade and living a life that's very different from and an expression of what they call themselves, which is very different from what God created. Yeah. And in those cases, when those people want to hold on to unloving attitudes and behaviours and beliefs, then we have really not much interest in spending time with them. Or no, but, to, but the key factor there is whether they want to hold on to them or not. Exactly. You know, we meet people who don't want to hold on to them and they recognise it is a problem and they do want to change. And those people interest us a lot, even if they are displaying a lot of their injuries. Yeah. The people who don't interest us much are the people who have, who have a lot of injuries have, and, and have no desire to change any of them and are not being their true selves at the same time. Yeah. And, and because we're not getting their true nature, the, the true soul, that personality or character that God created, it's very, very hard to interact them, with them when you're interacting as we do with people, which is on an emotional level, yeah. because you're not getting the true emotional person. You're, yeah. you're getting instead a, a construction or an imaginary person yeah. that is the construction, a, a combination construction of their own parents' injuries imposed upon them and, they, and their own choices that they've then engaged through their life. So yeah, those kind of people are very hard to interact with, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so we don't spend much time and, and don't feel very attracted to interacting with them. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose the second um, point in answering this question is that the people that we are um, interested in spending time with from a teaching perspective are often different from the types of people we might choose to spend our personal kind of social relaxation time with. Yes. And Ob there's reasons for that as well. Obviously, like if you think about it, you know, a seminar is open to all people to come and as long as they're willing to treat us and other people there in a loving manner, they can remain. But that doesn't mean that they're not being in a facade and that doesn't mean that they are not thinking or believing things that are completely out of harmony with love. And so a, a seminar, we meet many, many people whom we wouldn't normally spend a lot of personal time with. Yeah because they're not being as real as they as the people who we do spend personal time with. Yeah, and sometimes those people, um, while they have s sincere questions and have some sincere sincerity to grow and to know God and things like that, often they have concurrent with that a lot of addictions that they haven't dealt with, a lot of demands, and a lot of some things that you've spoken about in other questions and answers in this series about feeling quite self-involved in their own problems and and without much regard for our personal welfare. Yeah, it's almost sometimes like all I am to people is a library. Yeah. And 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 they kind of come along and pick my brain. Yeah. And and I'm not even really a person. Yeah. And you know, while I'm willing to allow that kind of behavior to a certain degree because of the condition the person's in, I'm not willing to spend my personal time with such a person when I want to particularly have a pleasurable personal time <laughs> because at the end of the day all I am to them is just a resource I'm and not I'm not even really a human a person and my also the other problem with it is I uh, they don't understand that God has all the answers for them and God God is capable of interacting with every one of God's children individually mm -hmm. I'm not yeah uh, that, that's why I know I'm not God and I know nobody ever will be who's been created by God because 
because at the end of the day, we're not capable of what God's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. God's capable of having an emotional, intelligent, emotional interaction with every single one of God's children. I am not yeah. capable of that and never will be, yeah. right? As far as I'm aware, yeah. you know, obviously, who knows what God's got in terms of development in store for us, I don't know. And, and, but, uh, but I know right at this moment in time, uh, I, I have a very severe limit, even though I can communicate to hundreds or thousands of people emotionally at the same time, um, I'm not capable of communicating to every single one of God's children who live on this planet at the same time. Yeah. And, and I don't believe that, uh, that they, we, we will ever be capable of that at the moment. I mm. don't believe that. Um, in the future, that belief may change. But I just feel that um, it's important that people understand that, yeah. that, that we are a person like they are. Yeah. We have interests like they are. We have time like they do. We have a limited amount of, of energy like they do. Mm -hmm. And, and to believe that we're omnipotent or something yeah. uh, that God is, is way, you know, it's, besides being totally wrong, it also is a complete misrepresentation of the truth about the human soul because it's not omnipotent. Yeah. It, it's not omnipowerful. It can't, it can't supply energy to everyone. Yeah. And um, only God can do these things. Yeah. And God only does it under certain conditions. And, uh, and I feel there is this expectation in many people that we somehow do that because of, and some of it's their beliefs about what Jesus is mm. or, and some of it's just because they have no, they think everybody should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and some of it's because they think they deserve that yeah. and, uh, and all of those kind of injuries. But, but it's obviously very difficult to interact with such people in a, in a what I would classify as a recreational environment. Yeah because all those people have a tendency of doing is taking more from you. Yeah. You don't replenish your own energy with these people. You, you finish up feeling exhausted uh, yeah. from these people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we're not that interested in spending so our social or personal time with those yes. kinds of people. We are interested in spending uh, our seminar time and mm -hmm. event time with people mm -hmm. in all sorts of conditions yep. because we know that they will need to have some time spent with them before they can change. Yes, exactly. But obviously, if a person has no desire to change, yep. then it's almost impossible for us to spend time with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose there are some people that we're really not interested in spending teaching time with or people that we don't want to spend teaching time with. And mm. perhaps if we run through um, some of those situations, some of those, yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's very similar to the, the different um, things that we mentioned in the previous question about people that we don't answer. Yes. Yeah. So um, the first uh, group of people or <laughs> lack or quality of those people would be people who just really don't want to love and have no interest in loving. Yes. Yeah. Like... Even in a seminar situation, if they've got no interest in loving, they don't want to love and they don't want to learn about God and they don't want to learn about truth and they don't want to be humble, then my feelings are, well, why are you taking our time yes. here then, you know, yeah. like obviously yeah. you're only here for an addiction of some kind to be met. Yes. And sometimes people come only to meet the addiction of being able to attack a group of loving people. Yeah, which is sad. Which is it? sad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those kind of people, we have little desire to, to spend, teach. even teach. Yeah. Well. well the reality is they're not desiring of teaching yeah, anyway. They're not teachable so they're yet. They're not teachable yeah. yet, and, but they don't even desire to be, to be taught. So their free will is such that they don't, they're, they're rejecting being taught. Mm -hmm. So a person who's rejecting being taught, we honour their free will and don't teach them. Yeah. We, don't, we don't want to share our time with them because they're rejecting being taught. They don't, they don't yeah. want it. Well, you said, you mentioned there that they're rejecting they don't have any desire to love, they're rejecting God's truth, they're rejecting personal truth, and they have no desire to be humble. And so, also they have no desire, they, they have no desire, their desire itself is an expression of their free will to not learn. Yes. And so we have to, if we love them, we have to enable that desire. And honour that desire. Well, not so much enable it, but honour it. Yeah. The fact is they're choosing to not learn, yeah. so we've got to choose to not teach them. 
Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, and beyond that, of course, there's people who are abusive, attacking. Um, yes. And, uh, and, and it's quite obvious why we wouldn't would, want them at a seminar. Yeah. Those kind of people will be removed from our seminars, <laughs> no, yeah. in fact. Because it not just, <coughs> if it's not just an issue of um, them not wanting to be taught anything. It's an issue of love of ourselves, and it's also an issue of love of the other people who are present at the teaching yeah. group. It also is an issue that they are actively using their will not to just reject truth, but to har harm Probably. others. Yeah. To harm others. Yeah. And we are not going to allow our events to be a forum where you can choose to harm others. And by the way, if you choose to be nice to us, but harm others, the same applies. Absolutely. We are not going to choose to allow you at our events if we notice you harming others while you're being nice to us. Yeah. That's not going to happen either. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. People uh, in a similar vein, people who are controlling and manipulative and don't want to change that. Yeah, I feel these kind of people are insidious in a way. They use uh, covert techniques mm -hmm. to do exactly the same as the other overt attackers, attackers would do. Yeah. But they're just using covert techniques which allow them to get away with their behaviour without being called on it. Yeah. And we're not interested in, in enabling that kind of behaviour either. No, and I've, I have noticed that there do, sadly, there seem to be people who are attracted to things like seminars or, or spiritual, spiritual pursuits, so-called spiritual, spiritual pursuits. Spiritual groups or gatherings um, with a facade of desiring to become more spiritual or have a spiritual life or develop themselves mm. who are actually there just because they have some very dark kind of motivations which are to have power over others to control others to manipulate others or to impose their opinion on others yep you know we get a lot of people come along to seminars who just want to say their piece to a group of other people who are yeah. not there to he listen to them. No, that's right. <laughs> or even you mentioned in a prior question, uh, women who just desperately want attention from men or men who just desperately want att attention from women. And mm. uh, so it they doesn't go along to really a seminar matter. to find some men or women. <laughs> women <laughs> who might give them that attention. It doesn't even really from a heart, soul level matter what's being spoken about. No. If they can get that addiction met, they're going to hang out in that group. Yeah, and they'll do it in a nightclub or in a seminar. <laughs> Exactly. It's very, and in, in a way, in a nightclub, it's more honest. <laughs> exactly, because most people are there for that purpose. For that exact purpose. <laughs> Although it could, be asked, yeah. uh, it could be argued with a lot of spiritual seminars that most people are there for that, <laughs> that purpose, purpose as well. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Um, people also who were not interested in teaching, uh, or yeah, I think that's a fair statement, are people who are selfish, self involved, who. Well, again, the reason why we're not interested in teaching them is because they're unteachable, really. You, yeah. you can't teach them anything anyway. Um, and I should say, I qualify that statement. People who are in that state and they have no desire to, to change. change. Yeah. Because obviously... There's plenty of people who come to seminars who are in that state, but they desire change. Yes. Even though they might not recognise that that's one of the things they need to change. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know that they want to become a better person or to have a relationship with God. Or Yeah, well, I find the people even who come to our seminars to be a better person don't interest me as much as the people who want to have a relationship with God, to be frank. Yep. Because the people who want a relationship with God are the people who, in the end, will desire to become a better person, whether that's challenging or not. Yeah. Uh, whereas the people who come to the seminars just for some personal improvement, personally improve to a degree, but they're not, uh, they're ne never going to be drawn into perfection yeah. because, they, because they get to a point where there's certain things they like about themselves which are out of harmony with love that they want to keep. And, mm -hmm. and also, would you agree that those kinds of people are often more prone to a desire for a facade of being yeah. a better person because it's so they see it as something valuable to be perceived as a good or a better person. A lot of it's image that, driven, yeah. That sometimes they'll reach a point <coughs> where God would really like them to know that there's a quite an unloving emotion within them, but they don't want to go there because it threatens their whole concept yes. that they're all about being a better person. Yes. And um, I, so I see a lot, a lot of people, people run into that. There that yeah. fall into that category sometimes, yeah. particularly it seems to be women. Yes. 
because women seem to have a very strong, men seem to have it with their intellectual prowess and women seem to have it with this concept that many women believe they are better than men because they are already emotional beings when we actually see them being emotional beings who are very out of harmony with emo loving, loving emotions. Controlling and manipulative with their emotions. Yes. Which is very, I feel very sad about that sometimes. Yes. That that's how, um, people begin to view femininity and emotion being humble and emotional is this as being manipulative terrible kind of expression of women being controlling and manipulative with their emotions and i understand why then some men feel very a lot of distaste for that because in well, fact it is distasteful <laughs> yes. but then when they think about being emotional a lot of people then equate this emotional expression with this thing that is very opposite. Yeah, so, but I, I see that so-called emotional expression as not emotional expression, but, but rather it's a facade of emotional mm -hmm. expression. It's really, um, there's a word for it that, I, that again doesn't come to my <laughs> mind, but um, that's happening a bit today. <laughs> um, but, but where they're portraying themselves as being something that they're really not anyway. Yeah. And it is, it is, it it's, is duplicitous and deceitful yeah. and uh, yeah, very hard to enjoy the company of a person who does such a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, yeah. and, you know, um, it's not good to aspire to that state either. It seems many women do aspire to that state, while many men aspire to the rigid, rigid intellectual state. Yeah. Um, and both states are out of harmony with what God created us to be. Yeah. Um, it's actually <laughs> the intellectual state needs to be brought to the, the true emotional condition before you where God really wants you to be. And this this very controlling, manipulative, facade-based emotional kind of expression. Which there's is a really, lot of work to do there. It's like a it's like a drama queen. Type yes, of, it's yes. like a that kind of emotional expression. It is very fake and and yeah. not what got what is attractive to God, and it's very unloving to the people around yes. that person. Yes. And there's a lot of work that that person is going to need to do on their facade and on their viewpoint of emotion. And actually, they're quite afraid of their real emotional experience. And mm. so, these very highly intellectual men and these very controlling, manipulative, emotional, emotional women. women. Uh, mind you, I've seen people from other genders on both sides course, as well. Of course, But they're, they're both groups are going to need to do work on themselves on to reach a state of true humility yes. that's going to enable their relationship with God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And obviously if they are not willing to do that, then it's hard for us to be attracted to spending time with them, even in a seminar, yeah. but certainly not spending our personal, personal time with them. Time. Yeah. We, the people we spend our personal time with are generally the people who have a large desire to uh, to meet the same goals that we have yeah which as we listed in the first part of this session yeah. you know in question number one of this session so if you haven't seen it my yeah. suggestion is to look at it and um, it is quite uh, involved progress from priority god down through different progressions yeah and um and and obviously we we are very attracted to people who have exactly the same priority list as ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because at the moment we're talking about just people um, who we like to spend teaching time with and people who we're not interested in spending teaching time with. Mm -hmm. And really the list for the people who we're not interested in spending personal time with is basically the same. same. But there's the addition that even if a person has a really strong desire to be humble and, and doesn't have a lot of these unloving things that they want to hold on to, hmm. if they have completely different personal goals or aspirations yeah, in like, their life... Like, for example, they may be humble at one with God eventually, yeah. um, very passionate about a lot of different things, although I'd suggest by the time you're at one with God, you're passionate about God, God as well. Yeah. But um, And so it's highly unlikely we'd want to yeah. not spend time. But but for people who are not yet at one with God, they might be passionate artists or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's very nice, or passionate musicians or passionate whatever, while it's very nice that we spend a bit of time with them, it's not something we're attracted to do all the time because our primary goals and passions re revolve around God, relationship with God, teaching about God, teaching about God's truths, 
that, and so it's obviously the people like that that we're going to be attracted to spend more time with so that we can both help them get to you know greater uh, uh, grow their condition of love but also so we can help them um, share the same things we wish to share with others yeah. with, uh, with other people because yes. it's like multiplying yourself yeah then yeah you, know, you end yeah. up having a large number of people all sharing this truth yeah in, with their personalities still being involved yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's continue down this list of um, people that we don't have a lot of interest of spending teaching time or personal time with. So yeah. that's also people who are quite spirit influenced and who have no desire to m release that spirit influence or remove themselves from that influence. Yes. Quite obvious, I feel Absolutely. like, you know, we're either talking to the spirit or we're talking to the person. <laughs> if a person's spirit influenced, who are you getting? Yes. You're not getting the person, you're not getting yeah. the spirit because the person doesn't think the spirit's with them. Yeah. And you're not getting the spirit because the, the person, sorry, you're not, you're not getting the spirit's true quality because the person doesn't allow that to come through. You know, it's just like, so yeah. it's very hard to help people like and that. And there's a crucial issue of will in there as well, I feel, where Huge the person or nurse is wanting to sort of give up their will to the spirit. The spirit in the spirit world doesn't want to have a full expression of their own will. They want to, you know, influence the will of another person. They're using so a person's body on earth. It's so... Um, it's very uh, sleazy... Dishonest. Personal, and, ...interpersonal yeah. relationship going yeah. on between the person yeah. and the spirit. Yeah. Very hard to have any decent kind of true, loving, real interaction with them. Yeah. 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 So while we'd like to help them release themselves from that baggage or from that bondage that they have with the spirit, yeah. if they do not have a desire to do so, which most of them don't, yeah. then... You know, there's little time, little reason to spend time with them. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. People who are in addictions, uh, they're very demanding about having their addictions met, and they've got no desire to release themselves from those addictions. <laughs> well, that, and that's the key thing. There's there's people who are spirit influenced, but they have a desire to get out of it. And there's people that are demanding an addiction, but they have a desire to get out with it. We would yeah. definitely want to spend some time with them, even if it's in a teaching role to help them get out of it. Yeah. But but if they have, have a deep addictions and you talk about it with them and they have no desire to change it, now yeah. there's little point in spending time with them. We yeah. can't feed their addiction. We can't enable it yeah. by spending more time with them. Yeah. Uh, we've just got to let them be because yeah. they are exercising their will to not address the issue. Yeah. So you just got to let them be. Yeah. You can't, we don't, we don't withdraw from them to punish them. We just, we no. just, we can't spend time with you because you're not being real. You're being in an addiction We we don't want the addiction. We don't want to feed the addiction and we want the real person and we're not getting it. So what, do we, what else do we do? Yeah. The only thing we can do is go and spend more time with people who are real and don't yeah. want their addictions. And we should probably say that about all these different groups and these different injuries that we're talking about and all these people. Mm. Like you and I don't have this feeling of like judgment and all no. bad people and we're not good it, it really feels almost a little bit um light to me now just like no i can't i can't go there even though you really want me to i can't go there with you because it's not just about yeah. looking after myself and my time it's also that i just can't help you with that it's thing also that about doing. loving them exactly like you can't sit there and engage the addiction with them and love them no you, you and and they want you just being there they want the addiction met so what do you do you've got to withdraw yeah. you're not trying to punish them or anything but you've no. got to withdraw in an act of love to them because yeah. they they just think they can sit there and get their addiction met all the time and you can't do it yeah if you really love people, you can't do that. No celestial spirit would ever do it. God certainly does not do it. And so any person who's aspiring to, to get to be at one with God can't do it either. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. All right. Um, people who are condescending, belittling, ridiculing, and can't see that that's what they're like and they don't <laughs> want to change it. And yeah, well, the we, same applies. We talked about this in the previous question Same as well. applies. Yeah. There's not... You know, all of these people feed into the same category, really, is yeah. not only are they in the state they're in, which is one thing, because yeah. everybody's got their injuries. Yeah. You know, the way the world is today, there's a lot of injuries e on the planet. Everybody's on the planet. got their injuries. Yeah. That's OK. Yeah. What the problem is, is if you don't want to change them. Yeah. That's the problem. If you don't want to change them, then we don't believe there's any time, any point in spending much time with you no. if you don't want to change them. If you want to change them, we'll spend a lot of time with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But we might not spend 
like our recreational time with you because yeah. it, it can be exhausting yeah. trying to help people who are in those injuries mm -hmm. but we at least will spend some time teaching with you because we because we feel there's a valid reason to help you change if you wanted to change so we're very responsive to a person's true exercise of their will their passion yeah. Yeah. if their passion and will is in the direction of wanting to mm -hmm. then we can feel that now there's a big difference between them believing it's in that direction and actually it is being in that yeah. direction yeah. There's a big difference between those two states too. And that probably leads us to the next group of people, which is people who are very addicted to their facade. They mm. refuse to interact with us in anything but facade. They refuse to even acknowledge that they're in facade, even though their actions and their emotions are showing us that they have completely different feelings to what they're presenting. It's just, it's, it seems, you know, we talked about this again in the previous question. Yeah. This is, what do you do? You just, yeah. I want the real person. Like, God wants the real person, you're not being your real person, mm. and you don't even want to know that you're not, and you don't even want to change. Yeah. All we can do is honour your will and yeah. say, fair enough, you don't want to change, but I want the real person, I'm not getting it. So, uh, as I said to one lady, we were driving home, she was sitting next to me, talking to me, and I said, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to even listen to you. You're not being real with me. Like, I'd rather be silent and so I can talk to God. Right? And from that moment on, she never spoke to me again, actually, <laughs> even though we spent the next two days together. Um, she was staying, you know, there and, mm. and we spent, a few, you know, she wasn't, it's not a sexual relationship or anything. I just said, no, I don't want this unreal person that you're presenting to me. Yeah. I want the real person, the person who feels what she feels, not the person who makes out she feels it. Yeah. Right? And uh, most people can't, who are in facade can't even grasp that because they believe their facade is better than what God created. Well, that's exactly Sad, why it's there, isn't it? Yeah. It's there specifically because at some point in childhood or adulthood, they chose to this deny person, their they've self. decided this is a better version of me yes. than what God created or the hurt that happened to me and the, yes. the childhood feelings Both. I have towards myself. Yeah. Both of those things, I don't want them anymore. I'm going to be this person Big plastic and person. I'm getting like I'm getting from them though no, I can feel all this stuff coming from you you're not voicing any of it yeah what's the point of interacting with you yeah. you don't want to voice any of it I don't want to interact my choice is that I don't want to interact with a person who's not being truthful with me yeah. I don't want to do it yeah. and I'm allowed to choose that yeah. so if we're driving in the same car I'm allowed to not say a thing yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's right. and Just like she's allowed about... to be her facade <laughs> self. <laughs> it's really not about arrogance or judgment or rejection. It's no. just a desire to interact really. And then if a person doesn't want to, that's cool. Yeah. We're not like invested not in having... not forcing them to be with me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, most of the time, these kind of people are forcing themselves to... on me. <laughs> on <you. laughs> anyway. All right. Um, the last two groups of people is people who come to our seminars who want to make their own point, who want to lecture us, who basically want to teach us a thing or two. Yeah. Um, basically, that's yeah. not the purpose of Go and have your own seminar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I often think. Like, <laughs> I, and I don't mean that in a nasty way. I think, look, if you've got that much conviction... It's very unloving to the other people at the seminar. The yeah. other people at the seminar are there to listen to somebody's teaching a certain thing. Yeah. If you're just there on your own soapbox, yeah. then you're being very unloving to every single person there, yeah. e including the person who's arranged the seminar, yeah. done it all on their own money, yeah. their own time, yeah. their own effort, yeah. their own resources and everything. Yeah. You're being very, very unloving to them. Yeah. Very unloving to them. And you know, I had this example, it's probably a couple of years ago now, where someone wrote to me and they were in a workplace and they were sent to some kind of training course yep. that was sort of somehow they said it something was... Something they didn't agree with. Something they didn't agree with that was posed in forced some upon kind of self-development or... Yeah, forced upon growth. them by the, by the job that they were in. Yeah. Yep. But then they said, look, I felt I needed to stand up for truth. Yeah. And I couldn't agree with anything the presenter said and I just had to keep correcting them. What an obnoxious person. <laughs> that was done because of divine truth and I needed to do it. What a lot of and rubbish. If you, yeah. if you understood love, you would never have done it. Exactly. You'd never be able to do it. And if you'd received any of God's love, you could never even consider no. doing it. And if you even felt anything about the respect of 
will and gifts and any of these loving principles, there is no way you would do that. No, if you, you really it. felt that you could not handle it, which would be an issue in itself. Correct. You would get up and... Because you're there for work. Exactly. And you're actually getting paid to handle it. And as far as I <laughs> understood, there was no kind of preaching of anything evil doing. It was no. just more sort of perhaps some new age principles about, you know, positive thinking and things like that. Just natural uh, love principles. Natural really. love principles, which, you know, that's love. Mm. <laughs> of a kind. Of a kind. Yeah. Um, but if you're really struggling, that the thing you could do is get up and leave the room. But even that but wouldn't be very loving. No. Like, you've got to question why you can't sit there being paid to listen to a person that you don't agree with exactly. without saying anything. Exactly. That's a lack of humility. Yeah. You know, exactly. If you know that they're wrong, there's no need for you to voice the opinion, like, unless they're asking for it. Yeah. If they ask for it, then voice the opinion. And there's a lot of times when we're in kind of... Uh, company or in out in the like in town or maybe we're in a social situation where views are being expressed that we do not agree with but unless we're asked directly there's no we have abs we do nothing to mm. enforce our no, beliefs on it's, others it's because their free will that they believe those things exactly and and if you're sitting in a seminar that somebody else has created mm -hmm. trying to force something down their throat yeah. then you're out of harmony with love before you begin yeah so it's like, and and that really includes the people who maybe say nothing but sit at the back of the room and project it all and project it. emotionally it's the same it's thing it's exactly the same yeah we've yeah. had many of those yeah and nowadays i remove them yeah it's just yeah. like yep yeah, you don't even want to be here you're just here to attack me please leave yeah. so i can get on with talking to this group of people who are here because they want to know something yeah <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. and that Moses might not have said anything. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. The final, the final group, if you like, of people or category of people that we talked about in terms of people we wouldn't respond to. Yep. Um, emails and questions. Yep. Um, now we're talking about uh, teaching and who we're not interested in. But yep. that was about anonymity. And I'm leaving that in for this one because there's a lot of ways that people try to sort of like for example we video all of our seminars yes and a lot of people believe that that they are entitled to say well you can't video me i want to be here yeah but bearing in mind that everything on our website says that if you come along to our seminars you will be videoed and if you don't want to be videoed don't come and to, watch the video yeah watch the video instead don't yeah. come to our seminar yeah. it's going to be videoed anyway don't come to our seminar if you don't want to be videoed yeah. And also, it's an, again an issue of transparency, openness yeah. and truthfulness. Yeah. If you don't want to know, other people to know that you were there, yeah. then my suggestion is you probably shouldn't be there. <laughs> yes, exactly. If, you, if you're that afraid if or you're that, you're afraid. that, you know, want to be duplicitous in your life about what you do, yeah. then, then why, would you, be why there? would you be there? And if you are there, then obviously you need to confront this issue. Yeah. You need to have more courage and confront the issue. It's, it's a part of your learning about God, yeah. really, in the end. Yeah. And so, yeah, I feel people who request of us to remove them out of the cut and clip, uh, clip them out of the Which is a huge issue, actually. It would take oh, so it's, much time it's to impossible. learn an eagle to do it. Because how do you, you know. get rid of that person who's in that yeah. corner of that Even if you're just panning and they happen to be in the shot. It's... And the other thing that I notice, which sort of relates to anonymity inside of my head anyway, um, is people who contact us either by email or maybe they're in a seminar and they do these kind of really uh what i find is they quite talk about in the third person oh <laughs> no right. yeah there's that as well yeah. but it's a sort of underhanded thing where they're trying to test you or i yeah oh, it's, and like, it's abusive yeah they want to you know say if you don't know what i'm thinking right now then that means a b and c are in that means that you're not jesus is yeah. the biggest one yeah, yeah. You, if you were jesus you should know yeah it's like i, I have to a, be god yes yeah <laughs> yeah and basically I, that's what they believe anyway yes. that jesus is god and so if someone's claiming to be jesus he has to have all the qualities of god yeah. and yeah. what a ludicrous concept yeah. Yeah. Like, if Jesus is a human, then, then of course he hasn't got any of the qualities of God except those qualities which he's asked for from God and God's been willing to give him. And he's been humble <laughs> enough to receive and exactly. desirous enough to receive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I find those people are really in quite 
Um, they're very unethical as well because they mm. don't want to share anything about, about themselves. themselves and they're really expecting so much, especially from you. Yeah, when um, we get those kind of emails, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the delete button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. I've had people approach me at seminars and say, look, what can you tell me about my biggest issue? And, and I say, oh, look. What do you believe your biggest <laughs> issue is? <laughs> well, even if I share what is quite blaringly obvious, then they say, well, that's not enough. You know, I need more. Yeah. And, and that kind of thing is really, it's really about um, testing and treating us like resource. And, yeah, and, so and it's very unkind behaviour. Yeah. Bearing in mind that all our seminars free and we just gave them usually four hours of our time for nothing. Mm -hmm. um, then they come up and have a request. And then when we don't accede to their request, they then criticise us. Yeah. That's a very unloving yeah. behaviour that they yeah. need to correct. Yeah. And if they wish to continue coming to our seminars, they might find themselves being removed from their <laughs> seminars if they continue that behaviour. But yeah, you know, this is obviously part of teaching people about love is acting upon what is loving. Yes. And this is something a lot of people don't get, I feel, is that we, one way we teach you about love is not by what we say, mm -hmm. but rather by how we treat you. Mm -hmm. And how we treat you is going to have very, like if you're finding we, you've got very little time to spend with us, how we're treating you, is, and, and if you assume that how we're treating you is loving, then maybe you, we have reasons for doing, yeah. treating you that way that you need to examine. Yeah. And, and, my, and when I say treat you that way, it's not like we're attacking anybody or condescending to anybody or disapproving of anybody. We're just not going to allow your bad behavior. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously how we treat you has a, is a very interesting way for you to work, work out. Because if you think about it, for many of you, we treat you the same way God treats you. Yeah. God doesn't hear you either or doesn't respond to what he hears. Yeah. God doesn't feed your addictions. God yeah. doesn't give you approval when God feels you need to have a cry yeah. and all those kind of things. God, God is very clear of how God treats other people. Mm -hmm. And the closer you get to God, the more you'll be like God. Mm -hmm. And yet you look on the planet, the average person criticizes God and complains about how God treats them. Yeah. Uh, in the end, don't you think the average person, once you become at one with God, is going to criticise you and complain about you, about how you treat them? Yeah. Because they do it with God. And if you're at one with God, surely they're going to do it with you. Yeah. So people, I don't think, are very logical about that. Yeah. They often believe that a God would treat them in one way. You know, like, you know, <clears throat> I always remember a seminar, it was just a little seminar I went to in somebody's house, and uh, there was about 10 or 12 people there, and this lady said to me, yeah, you're definitely not Jesus because I went to this guru, she quoted this guru's name, and I know what this guru does. He projects sexually at women in order to give women a sense of sexual worth, a sexual and, worth yeah. and approval. And all the women just fall over backwards for him, right, yeah. as a result. And so he, she then quotes his name and says, you don't do that. I don't feel any love coming from you. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's so interesting. Hey, yeah. I actually love you by not sexually projecting at you. Yeah. And you don't see it as love because you have the addiction that yeah. any man who sexually projects at you is love yeah. and therefore more connected with God. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And that's how distorted people are sometimes yeah. is they have no you know, idea really what's going on with them or why they feel a certain way about people. Yeah. And the majority of times it's because their addictions are not getting fed. You know, yes. and yes. When, nowadays when people think whenever you're feeding an addiction, they think, oh, you're a wonderful person. He's <laughs> such a loving person, <laughs> such a kind person. And, everything. and then as soon as you stop feeding their addiction, oh, he's such a bastard of a person, you know, like he's a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I find it quite interesting. And this is the reason why most people have a tendency to think God is a, ba is a bastard. Yeah. Because God's not feeding their addictive, addictive emotions yeah. and yet you know they don't think that maybe god has the better opinion of love than they do yeah yeah <laughs> i know it's i it's interesting isn't it because everyone on earth we're all coming from this injured state of love that's mm. why we are not you know perfectly loving and especially we're very injured when it comes to an understanding of what it means to love from God's perspective, the yeah. absolute truth of what is love. Yeah. And so it's kind of a strange, it, if we could all lighten up about it, we'd learn a lot more quickly and just sort of go, oh, yeah, I, maybe I don't really get what this is about or maybe. Well, like we say in our assistance groups, 
education in love on the planet, there's hardly any at all. It's like, lacking, yeah. You know, I just had an email a few weeks ago from a man. I think he said he's got one of the only courses of love in a university that's ever been done in, in the US. Yeah. And I go, oh, that's probably right. You know, like yeah. at the end of the day, I, I've never seen a course in love. No. <laughs> you know, that, that actually teaches true love. No. Um, and, and this is why, where God is trying to teach humanity true love. And most of humanity is just feeding on addictions. So, of yeah. course, most of humanity has no interaction with God. And if the more you or I become like God, the more mm. we become at one with God, that once we become exactly at one with God, then most people will have the same opinion of us as they have of God, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, that's a, and that's sad, but yeah. the reality is most people on the planet do want their addictions met. They do want to have this addictive mm. projection so that they can feel good rather than working through their issues in a real way. Yeah, I sincerely hope that us growing and hopefully inspiring other people to grow towards being at one with God and so many mm. in, in areas of their life, I hope that that is going to help people to recognise that this process of moving from addiction to actually becoming more sensitive to what is truthfully loving mm. um, can be a, such a rewarding process because speaking from experience, when you're in addiction, those so-called good feelings you're getting, that honestly, honestly, they're just so yucky yeah. compared to what it feels what like real when love you, feels like. yeah, when you're really in a really loving exchange, when you receive love, when you mm. receive some of God's love, and um, I know that it feels sort of shaky for everyone a lot out there, you know, um, but I really hope that um, even though. I'm, I'm well aware that people are probably going, a lot of people are probably going to start to have similar feelings towards us as they have towards God. And a lot of times that's not necessarily nice. I sort of have the feeling that in the long term, <laughs> I hope that people come to sort of. I think that's hope, more of a hope than a reality. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, the reality is that any person who's in an addiction is going to be challenged by a person who loves. Yeah. Because the person in addiction, by definition, wants their addiction met. Exactly. So, so the reality is that it's going to be very difficult for a person who's in addiction to recognise love. Yes. And that's always going to be the case. Yeah. And it's only when the person starts to work through their addictions will they begin to yeah. recognise love. Yeah. And I feel yeah. that that's the key thing. And there just is the desire for people to start to challenge addictions. If they can grow that desire, then well, it's so rewarding. Well, you, you think about your own growth. Like you could barely recognise love when I met you, I feel. Barely. And, I, and now no, you're no. starting to recognise love more. But what have you had to do to get to that condition? You've had to address addictions. Yeah. That's the only way you've come to recognise love. And my yeah. facade. And facade and addictions kind of support each other. And I've kind well, of facade is all about growing, addiction. Yeah, they're sort of yeah. intertwined. Absolutely. And I do understand, having been through that in recent times, you know, in recent years, that, yeah, you don't just go, oh, I'm in addiction. Oh, now suddenly I realise what love is. Like, you have to go through an emotional process of desiring to let go of the addiction, feeling the error within yourself, and that become has made me more sensitive. Yeah, it's interesting you say all that because I feel by definition that's what the path is. It's, you're saying things that I feel the path is. Everything yeah. is emotional. You have to get rid of your addictions emotionally before you'll recognise love. That will definitely occur. Yes. Like when you emotionally release your addiction, you will emotionally be able to recognise love. Yes. But you can't, like you say, do it intellectually. And you but, can't do it without some pain. Yeah, but yeah. by definition, the path is a path of emotion. Yeah. So, so, like, you know, I feel sometimes we talk about the intellectual side of things, but the reality is if we have to talk about something intellectually, we're not on the path. <laughs> the yeah. path is emotional. <laughs> the path is going through an emotional experience. Yes. So, so the reality is unless a person wants to emotionally release the addiction, mm -hmm they will not recognise love. And you've had to emotionally recognise and feel and experience the addictions. And Definitely. it's only after then 
that you've started to feel even love enter you from external sources. And and I suppose what I was trying to say is it's only after that process that I've begun to appreciate true sources of love. Uh, yes, to, because, to because feel that, them it's as only after that that you have the ability to feel love coming into your soul. Before then, all you're interested in feeling is the addictive emotion coming into your soul. It's like a compulsion. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so unless the, purpose, the reason for the addiction, the cause of the addiction is released emotionally, yep. you will always demand the addiction be met. Yep. And this is what I'm saying, is that a person who becomes at one with God no longer feeds the addiction. So every single time that person talks with a person who is in addiction, the person in addiction will feel dissatisfied through the discussion. Yes. Not satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Even though the person who loves is loving. Yeah. So, so, and this is what we've got to, this is why we're not attracted to, to d doing, you know, events with people who are in addiction, because at the end of the day, if they desire to remain in it, yeah. they're basically only wanting the emotion they want from the person, mm -hmm. in, in our case, from ourselves, mm -hmm. rather than wanting to be loved. Yeah. So, and they obviously have the same thing going on with God. Yes. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it with other people. Yes. So, you know, we, you know this is going to be a problem for, for them. But I, I feel you've got to be very careful about raising issues from an intellectual perspective. Yeah, though. I, look, I don't know where I Because I feel sometimes I you still then, do I think that. I kind of, yeah. Yeah, you still raise an issue intellectually where you go, where you sort of say, Oh, but pe people don't realise that if they don't re recognise this intellectually and go through this process, then this is what's going to have to happen. I feel it's very simple. We re emotionally release the blockage. Yes. Once that's gone, you can emotionally recognise love. Yes. Before that time, you can't. Exactly. And you are not going to feel good about the loving treatment because you want the unloving treatment. You want the unloving yeah. treatment. You believe yeah. that unloving treatment is love. Yes. That's what the addiction demands. Yeah. The addiction demands that you believe the unloving treatment is love. Yeah. So a person, for example, just wants every man to project sexually at her. Yeah. Like he's got to be unloving to himself and unloving to you to do it. Yes. And yet you want it. That's, that's what love does. That's what this, sorry, addiction, addiction does. Yeah. Love, what would love do? Love, if the guy loved you, he would never project at you sexually, even if he found you attractive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even yeah. if he felt emotionally, he would not feel an attraction towards you. Yes. Because he knows that you've got the addiction and he cannot satisfy the addiction. Mm -hmm. so, so getting back to the example I gave where this woman said that I wasn't loving. Yes. <laughs> because I didn't feed her sexual addictions, yeah. um, she can't recognise love. She's got no idea about it. That's why she thinks that guru who's just a sexual projector and a sexual manipulator and actually mm. a sexual deviant, actually, yeah. who manipulates women through sexual projection, mm -hmm. um, that's why she thinks he's loving and connected with God. Yeah. And, and which was the broader point that you were making, which is why so many people feel estranged and have a bad opinion, estranged from God and have a bad opinion of God. Correct. Because they're viewing addictive um, emotional exchanges as love. Yeah, well, this and lady, this lady um, connected her feelings from this man, which was sexual in nature, yeah. as if God would feel those things for her. Yeah. Now, how sleazy would that be? that God, instead of feeling like, instead of you feeling sexual stuff only with your soulmate, God made you so to have all this sexual stuff coming from God. Yeah. No, God hasn't made you that no. way, but it is a new age belief. It is. And yeah. the reason why is because there's so many spirits projecting sexually at new age practitioners yeah. that they then think that they're connected with God through the sexual experience. Yes. And it's ludicrous besides being completely false. Yeah. The, all they're getting is a whole heap of uh, sexual addictions met through spirits. And, and a person who loves you would not do that. Yeah. A person who loves you knows that the only sexual experience that you would have if you were in your true state would be with your other half, your yeah. soulmate. Yeah. And that would be the only sexual experience. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't want to interfere with that in any way. Mm. And that includes God. God doesn't want to interfere with your relationship, sexual relationship with your soulmate. Yeah. God does not supply sexual energy to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
It's very And clear. I just feel that, you know, oftentimes people in addiction want certain types of energy, whether it be sexual or approval or glory or attention or, yep. or you know, be the centre of attention of everybody. Or even or to feel superior because to they've feel superior. found yeah. this So they like people path. who are feel inferior yep. around them so that they can feel superior and so forth. Yep. Yep. That's not what God's like. No. And also, if you become one with God, that's not what you'll be like either. And it's certainly people who want those kind of emotions, well, they are just less and less attracted even to our teaching because more and more that we both progress, less and less and less and less of that kind of emotional exchange comes out. Of us. Comes out. Yep. So of yep. course they're not going to be satisfied. Yeah. So eventually they'll find an excuse to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Send us a breakup letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you and I will just sort of be sitting here in our studio just <laughs> making videos that not many people watch. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm kidding. I feel, I, as I started saying, I feel more hopeful that, that there is some aspiration in some people to challenge Well, this is the thing. There, is, there are sincere people. Yeah. And there are sincere people who do want to have a relationship with God and who do want to challenge their addictions and who do want to let go of their facade. And the reality is we are seeking those people. Yeah. And in fact, the material we teach will only find those people. Yep. The other people will ignore it. Yep. And it doesn't matter how much somebody advertises it or markets it or anything, it's still only going to find those people in the long run. Yeah. And that's the kind of people we're seeking. Yeah. Mm. Well, thanks so much for this session, babe. Yeah, no worries. <laughs>